I've been going over some of my old YouTube lives and removing some of them because the information is outdated, but there's a lot of good questions in there that I thought are worth addressing. I did one about SEO questions and this comes up a lot and it actually did just come up in the public Facebook group. And it's the question of how you can rework a dead listing or a listing that was selling and what you should do to it to make it kind of revive again. So let's get into this. But before that, if you're not familiar with me or this channel, my name is Kara Bunton. I'm a longtime Etsy seller. I have three shops. I have over 43,000 sales in my main shop. And I do this YouTube channel to help other home-based creative businesses get their businesses to where they want them to be. So the question of how to rework a dead listing is pretty common on Etsy because of the way that the Etsy algorithm works. And it's not uncommon for something to sell for a while and do really well. And then it just kind of tapers off and dies out and it doesn't sell again for whatever reason. The first thing you need to be very careful about is changing anything on any listing that was one of your best sellers. If something was selling really well, there's something about that listing that Etsy likes and it wants to keep showing it to people. But there's also something about it that people like because they keep clicking through from the search results to that listing. The question is, what is that thing? What are those factors that make that listing popular? And you don't know. It could be that Etsy just likes the listing and it keeps showing it to people because it likes the keywords in it, but it could also be that the pictures are really good and it makes people want to click through to the listing from search. So there's never really a way to figure that out. Etsy doesn't just use keywords in search placement. It uses customer interaction as well. So if you do anything to the listing that's going to affect the way that people click through to it from search results, then it's going to affect that listing's placement in Etsy search. So the first thing I would say is that if you have a listing that was very popular until recently, don't change anything on it just make a copy and work on that instead because that way you can change as much as you want on the copy and it won't damage the first listing if there's something about that that you change and it really messes it up. Okay, so about recency, Etsy doesn't tell us what recent is. So, you know, it seems to me that things are falling off the Etsy radar a little faster than usual, but that could just be my perception. They don't tell us that information. But if something was a bestseller six months ago and you really haven't sold it since, I would be fine with going in and changing that listing originally without making a copy. You might still want to make a copy just to be on the safe side, but I'd feel comfortable going in and changing something if it was a long time period like that. If the listing was a bestseller last week and you haven't sold any in three days, definitely, no, don't change anything. That's, that's recent. So just make a copy and work from that and you'll be much safer. So we have that out of the way. Just make a copy if it's really recent, but it, you know, if it's months and months and it's not a big deal. So what happens after that? The first thing you should do is to try to figure out why that listing is not popular anymore. Is it something that's seasonal and the season is gone? Is it something that used to be trendy and it's not as trendy anymore? Is, is there something that was promoted on a social media platform and you got a lot of traffic from that, but that wave is kind of over? there might be a very specific reason that you can identify. And if that's the case, then it might not have been a search engine reason why you were at the top of search. It could just be an outside traffic reason. If it's not an on Etsy traffic situation that was getting you those sales, it might not make a difference if you go in and rework the listing. For things like trends, if it's not trending anymore, it'll probably keep selling occasionally, but it's probably never going to get back to the level of you were selling it while it was so trendy. So it might not even be worth putting the time into reworking the listing at all. If there's no reason that you can identify specifically, then you do want to probably go in and rework it a little bit, but follow these guidelines or you could really screw yourself up. Okay, so the first thing is the copy. Don't forget about that. Okay, so the next thing you want to do is to provide Etsy with some good bait keywords. Now, when I'm talking about Etsy bait, I talk about Google bait all the time from our website, but Etsy bait keywords are basically keywords that are popular, that are, have good search and engagement. And you wanna put those in your listings. If they're accurate, make sure they're accurate, but you wanna put those in your listings because Etsy will see those and go, ooh, people like these keywords and they're more likely to show a listing that has good keywords in it for high search and engagement than they are for keywords that nobody ever searches for. If Etsy knows that customers interact with those keywords and they see them in your listing, then that's a point in that listing's favor. How do you find those keywords? Well, the first thing is to use your common sense. You know your products better than anyone else. So just look to see what kinds of keywords are popular in your industry. 
If you know that people are searching for them, definitely put them in the listing. You don't need to do any keyword research for that. You can use an Etsy keyword tool like Marmalade, and that will show you the search and engagement for keywords that you might not have thought to use. And so that's valuable for that. And definitely put those in the listing, the title and tags, and just give Etsy a lot of good general keywords that are good search and engagement. You can use the Etsy search bar to look for keywords. You can get keyword ideas anywhere, but I don't recommend that as the only place to find keywords. And you don't have to use keywords that only show up in the search bar. That's a terrible idea because there are keywords that show up in the search bar that are just dumb and we've made things trend in the search bar. Those are recent searches, not popular ones. Don't rely on that alone, but it is an idea where you can start to get keywords and, and go from there. You can also go to Google Trends and see what kind of keywords are trending on Google. And Google Trends works on an exact keyword order match. So if a keyword is getting a lot more searches in Google, it's probably getting more searches in Etsy too. And you can use that exact word order for the keyword in Etsy. And it might get you a little bit more traffic on Etsy if people are searching for that keyword in general. The best place to look for Etsy keywords that are actually bringing you traffic is in the stats for that popular listing that you are reworking. All right, so go to that listing, look in the keyword stats and see what kind of keywords are bringing you the most traffic. Definitely transfer those over to the copy if you've made a copy and don't get rid of them out of the original one if you're just reworking that. But you wanna keep the keywords that are bringing you traffic because those have been proven those are validated and proven to bring you traffic from Etsy and you don't wanna get rid of them. You also wanna look in that older listing to see if there are keywords that never brought you any traffic. So for example, if you have like birthday party decorations as one of the keywords in your listing, but no one ever searched for birthday, then you can get rid of that and it's not really gonna hurt the copy that you made if you don't include that in the copy keywords. Just make sure that the keywords that you're putting in the new listing are the best ones from the old listing and that'll give you kind of a head start and because you know that you've already gotten traffic from those keywords. You also wanna make sure that your categories and attributes for that listing are all filled out accurately and thoroughly and don't throw things in there just to fill something out. If there's an attribute that doesn't fit your listing, just leave it alone. It doesn't matter. You want to be more accurate than like 100% complete. After you're done with your keywords, you have your titles and tags all set up. Now I want you to look at your pictures, all right? Are the pictures something that you could improve? Now, probably not, because if the old listing was bringing a lot of traffic, then those pictures are probably good. So you might want to leave the first picture in place unless you think you can take a better one or you might wanna maybe change the second, third, and fourth ones, but leave that first one in place. So just take a look at the pictures and see if you can improve them because that might make a difference. Like I said, pictures don't help in search placement directly, but it does help when people click through from the search to the listing because of the photo. After you're done with the keywords and the photos, you wanna look at the description. Now Etsy does not use descriptions for search placement. They don't do it, so you don't have to worry about optimizing your descriptions for anything, but it is information for the customer, and if you can make the descriptions easier to read or just a little more thorough, then that's not gonna hurt. One thing that has been going on recently is that Etsy has been making it harder to find the descriptions in the listing. So if you're on mobile, you have to really dig for it. And that's one thing that you should just go to Etsy when you're signed out, go on a browser that you're not signed in on and see what your listings look like in different browsers. Because if you see that it's really hard to find the description, that's information for you. And then you can also see what they are showing because I know that Etsy shows the materials section. You can use that materials section to give information to the customer as long as it's kind of materials related. You don't, you don't want to get too far. Don't put your whole description in the materials section. That's not what I'm saying. But if it's something like if you sell patterns, you can put pattern only in the material section and that does show up a little more prominently in the listing when someone is looking at the listing itself but think about the description. And then we also wanna think where else we're gonna put the description information if Etsy is hiding it. One thing you can do to put description information is put some of it in your photos. If you have other things that you require from the customers, like a photo for a custom order or information like that, you can put that as an infographic in the photos in the listing, and then people can see it. They don't even have to go to the description to get that information. You can also use listing photos to say things like, I ship really fast, or sign up for my newsletter to get a discount. 
just anything that's going to make the customer more likely to buy, make a little infographic, put that in your listing photos. I think I have some listings where I have two photos of the product and six infographics. So after you've reworked your keywords, your photos and your description slash information, just whatever you want to kind of lump that all in together, what do you do next? Well, first you need to give this video a thumbs up if you are enjoying it or you think it's been helpful. I do appreciate it. And it does tell me that you guys like these kinds of videos and that I should make more of them. But as far as Etsy goes, the next thing you should do is back away from the listing and give Etsy time to figure it out. Etsy needs time to figure your listing out. It will find your listing very quickly, like in 10 or 15 minutes at the most, but it needs to give time and interaction from customers in order to really figure out who to show it to, what it is, who it appeals to, and that kind of thing. And that is part of the search placement algorithm. Something that people say they do, and this just makes me cry for them, is that they're like, I posted a new listing and it didn't get any views, so in two days I went in and tweaked everything. Well, that's not good because that's not the right approach you need to take with this type of search engine. The way that Etsy search works now is it does rely on interaction. And if you're not getting any interaction, the right thing to do is not to go in and change titles and tags. The right thing to do is to send Etsy interaction that it can use. This can either take the form of using Etsy ads, which is probably the better option because then people will be finding it through keyword searches. Or it could be social media where you're sending people to the listing directly without even using Etsy search. And then if Etsy has a profile on that customer, they can figure it out from there. And you have to look at this as either time or money. You can either spend the time on social media or an email list or whatever to send people to your listing, or you can pay for ads and have it feature a little prominently. That might be a better option, like I said, because then you will get the keyword information and Etsy will get information from search and from people clicking on it after they search for things. And that does give them a little bit more information. But if you can't afford that, then just send as much traffic as you can to your new listings because that will show Etsy some interaction too. One thing I would say is I've seen a lot of people say, oh, put a new listing up and immediately put it on sale. Well, that's probably illegal. In most places, you have to have something on sale at the regular price for a certain amount of time before you can legally say it's on sale. So you need to just check the laws in your area. But in general, you cannot put a new listing up and then immediately put it on sale because it hasn't been offered at the regular price. But back to the original purpose of this video. Okay, so once you start getting some traffic in, and you can see keyword data coming through, then you can start seeing if the keywords that you're being found for, for the copy of the listing or for the revised older listing is accurate. Is it, are they good keywords? Are they keywords that make sense for that listing? Now, in the meantime, if the old listing has started selling again, but just not as fast as it used to, you can use some of the data from the new listing if you've added different keywords and it is being found for that. You can take that keyword information and put it into the old listing and kind of keep that sales history, but add the better keywords in there too. But if the new listing has started selling and the old listing still hasn't, then you might just want to delete the old listing and go with the new one. Totally up to you. It's okay to have two of the same thing in your shop as long as you can fulfill both orders if you, somebody comes and buys both at the same time. Etsy says that's okay. The important thing to remember is that you need to leave that listing alone. Once you do the new copy or you revise the old one, you need to back away from the listing Give Etsy time to understand it. And I'm not talking about three days. I mean like at least a month. You want to give Etsy time to do its job and not try to do its job for it because that's not the way the search engine is working right now. So watch this video next. I'm gonna be doing one about keyword research coming up and I will talk to you later.